Hey everyone, welcome to Tuesday with Pastor Dan. Um, we're going to continue on our Grinch conversation a little bit. Um, I know this last chapter there was something that really, a couple things that kind of struck me thinking about the Grinch. We always, well, the Grinch is the bad guy. Um, he's the villain in this story, right? The Who's down in Whoville are, are, are doing their thing. They're celebrating Christmas. They're they're enjoying and, and doing all that stuff, decorating and presents. And uh, depending on which version you watch, um, if you watch the Jim Carrey version, um, it's super, super extravagant. Um, actually, the, the Benedict Cumberbatch version, Cumberbatch version and the Jim Carrey version, um, super extravagant. And the book is as well. Um and and it this 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 elaborate um cha- almost chaotic I, I it's almost extremely overwhelming how much they're doing um and it irritates the grinch and he's the bad guy right he's the villain he's the villain in the and he is really if we we think about it he 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 tries to do um in some ways what the world does and take the things we love and turn them against us he takes the Christmas things and turns them against Christmas for the Who's, right? He dresses like the, the, the red suit, the beard, the sleigh, the reindeer in Max dressed up as, as you know, all those things he takes, those things that represent uh, for the Who's and for us in many ways, hope and joy and peace and love. Um, and, and he takes them and he manipulates them and turns them back against them, and, and you know the, the red sack that is full of presents to give. He turns it into a red sack that's for taking the presents. And so yes, don't uh, the the initial Grinchness is he's the villain of the story, and he he does, and and the world does this the same way. He tries to take the things that we value and we think are important, or or we hold dear, and 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 will try to manipulate them. Um, against us um, and use them to distract us, to pull us away, um, to, to, to steal from us the joy. Um, I think in this, Dr. Seuss uses this manipulation um, as a pointer, as an indicator, um, as an indicator of how Back then when he wrote it, and, and now more so, of what is important. I think the Grinch, as a story, steals Christmas because he's trying to... Zeus is trying to redirect us to what's important about it. Um, right? Is it the trees? The decorations? The presents, the extravagance, um, is it the getting? If you look at the Who's, their celebration is not, it's not not deserving of criticism. It deserves some criticism. And I think Seuss does this. He, he, he's, that's why the Grinch exists, is to criticize this celebration. Especially, especially in the Jim Carrey video, uh, movie version, where they are so wound up on getting and having, and uh, it's the presence and the presence and the presence and more and more and more, um, and it, it, it he really points that that in that version that that's what bothers the Grinch, um, and. So here's the question that keeps coming back up. There's things that trigger Christmas for us. There's things that indicate Christmas for us. Is it the songs? Is it the music? Is it the decorations? You know, those things just, oh, it feels like Christmas finally, or whatever. Um, but what keeps coming back up to me is um, it's how we focus so much on the outward appearance of Christmas instead of truly anticipating and welcoming the presence of God with us. Um, we have become Clark Griswold to bring in another great movie um, we gotta have that lit house at the block and it's gotta shine and, and the perfectly neatly manicuredly 
wonderfully wrapped packages under the tree and the, the bows and the things and the this and the that and the biggest tree. It's almost the Facebook syndrome. We got to look like everything's okay. We got to appear. It's that outwardness. Uh, look at our Christmas. Look at how grand it is. Versus, versus knowing that God's there. Versus the feeling and understanding and the truth that God's in our midst. See, it comes to that in how the Grinch stole Christmas. He's mad. He's frustrated that they, they these who's they they get and they get and they get. But at the end of it, Cindy Lou, they wrap, they hold hands around the tree has no light, and they sing, like they always do. Because of singing and the hope and the truth of the, of the day and the reminder. The presents are incredible. Not because it's great to get, but I, I, there's something incredibly wonderful about giving someone something that uh, makes them smile. Brings about a little bit of hope. Always loved that our church does this, does the Christmas giving and the food boxes and and, and reaching out and doing that because that's it's not an outward thing. It's it's the right thing, and that's what Jesus is about. That's what this 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 time of year is about: is to remember the right thing to do, is to just be open, to just be honest, to be hope filled and joy filled, and to give. Um, not because we're going to get something in return. It's about grace. It's about getting something and giving something. So it's about giving something and being reminded that we've been given something so powerful. It's not about what appears on the outside, but what's going on inside. I hope you all can take a minute like I have taken here, seven of them actually, um, to really think about who we are. Are we the who's? Are we trying to show such gloriousness or, or are we in some way trying to live out the true Christmas story for others? Is it about being seen or being in the grace and the hope and the love of Christ? You all have a blessed week. Look forward to seeing you soon.